Welcome to another episode of Q&A with Pastor Andrew F. Carter. And today I have a very special guest with me in the house. This is my brother in Christ, Mr. Christian Juarez. You guys in the comment section, give him a round of applause and welcome him. Uh, he might be a little nervous because this is his very first podcast. But God, with a smile like that and amazing hair, I mean, he looks like a natural. So uh, Christian is a part of our church here at Royal City in Inglewood. And uh, man, I just want to commend you for the way you've jumped all the way in. You know, Christian showed up and on a whim started going to outreach. He went down to Skid Row. He showed up and ready to serve. And uh, him with his now fiance, Miss Lizbeth, have been all in. And those are the kind of men and women that we want to surround ourselves with. Men and women who see the vision and uh, are, are sacrificial and have a servant heart. And so I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you. Of course. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me on. Of course, man. Of course. So where does that servanthood and like that servant heart come from? Where, where does that come from? Um, well, I think a lot of it has to do with just my parents and the way I was raised. I mean, ever since I was a kid, I've loved helping people and being there for people. Um, even though, you know, I did leave the faith for a little while, I, it was always in my heart to just love people and be there for others. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So parents out there, this, this could be the product of your leadership, you know, a good looking young man who loves the Lord and, and serves him well. Uh, it's important, parents, how we raise our children. So where are you from? Uh, so interestingly enough, I was actually born here in Inglewood. Oh, wow. Uh, Inglewood. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. So I was born in Inglewood, uh, spent uh, most of my childhood in South Central Los Angeles, a okay. pretty rough neighborhood to grow up in. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, my mother moved me out of there at a young age, around 10 years old, over to uh, the Inland Empire. Okay. And I've been there ever since. Gotcha. Would you say that the Inland Empire is less uh, crazy than Inglewood and, and oh, South Central? A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So you alluded to going away from Christ for a little bit, um, and I don't mean to pry, but I'm curious if you would maybe share with the people a little bit uh, about how that looked. What did that look like uh, going away from the Lord? Yeah, so um, just at a young age, maybe in the, my middle school, towards the high school years, um, I started to think, you know, that I knew it all or that I was a little bit smarter than these religious people that I was around. And um I just had a very hardened heart, um, and it was a lot of church hurt and things like that. So it wasn't anything that, you know, I never really had a relationship with Christ. It was just uh, parents would take me to church, and I was bored, and I didn't like it, things like that. So um, it was a very dark time, and uh, just being on my own uh, away from Christ was just not 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 where it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people can resonate with that, just because uh, a lot of people go to church or know the Bible but don't know Jesus. That's a, that's kind of a norm and something that I'm seeing is people will even know how to quote the Bible, but don't know how to apply it. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, what would you say was the thing or was there like a moment that brought you back to Jesus? <clears throat> yeah. So similar story to Pastor Andrews here. Um, I actually landed myself in jail at the age of 18. I was freshly 18, maybe four months in, and uh, I was doing a lot of bad things. I was addicted to drugs and uh, struggling with lust and um, just in a very dark place. Um, landed myself in jail and um, when I was in that cell is really where Christ found me. Wow. Um, I was having these dreams that I couldn't explain um, where I, I it was revealed to me that all those years of being alone and doing my own thing and being in a dark place, um, struggling with sin, um, God was still always there looking out for me um, and realizing that is, is what, you know, turned my heart around and made me realize that, you know, Jesus Christ was, is the way and he was always there. Oh, I love that. So, so that's even another word for parents, right? Is although you were in church and maybe you didn't know Jesus, the seeds were planted, right? The Bible says, train a child up in his way and he won't depart from it. And so, uh, we all have like that prodigal moment where you're like, oh, I know everything. And then it leads you to the pig pen, uh, and essentially the brill pen for you. How long were you in jail? I wasn't there long. Maybe like three weeks. 
Oh, bro, that's still a hey, one day in jail is long enough. <laughs> no, I, I believe that there's parents out there praying that their kids would get a 21 day sentence, right? Yeah. To pull their head yeah. out of the mud, you know? So um, I love that. I love that. So you have a, uh, and I don't know, do you co-own the brand Disciple? Is that a Disciple shirt that you're rocking? This is a Disciple shirt. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. It's our called and chosen. Got the Matthew 22, 11 on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I started it myself um, last year um, with the help of my beautiful fiance. Nice. And uh, yeah, we've just been going ever since. Um, really, I just wanted to, you know, create, I always had a vision for it. And I always, you know, looked at other clothing brands and took inspiration and things that I could make my own. Um, but really the inspiration for it was just being able to give back and using, you know, its profits and stuff for outreach and things like that. So. Yeah. And then that you have, I mean, we've been beneficiaries of your generosity with your time, energy, effort and resources. And we appreciate that. You've even given me some swag. So I even had a chance to wear one of the sweaters on one of the episodes yeah. and I appreciate that. But what's the the heart? Like, tell me, how did you guys come up with the name? Uh, was there something, you know, more spiritual or you were just like, oh, disciple dope. Like what was the process of, of coming up with that? Um, the word disciple just always really stood out to me um, just because, you know, we're, we're all um, as followers of Christ, we are like his disciples and um, just uh, the gospels and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it was just really a big inspiration for me. Um, I always really wanted to see myself or strive to be like the disciples. So yeah. um, that name just always stuck with me and, and I just knew it was right. Yeah. And I would say, man, you are a true disciple. Uh, I read a, a book recently. I believe it's, uh, it's 12 Ordinary Men. And I'm not sure if it's by John MacArthur. I think it's by John MacArthur. I read the book. I should know, but I know the title at least. Um, and it talks about the 12 Ordinary Men and the Disciples. And you are one of kind of our close knit group of men in our church. And I just commend you and you, you use your talents, your gifts and, uh, what God's doing in your life for his glory. You do an amazing job at that. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Well, I, I, I want to thank you as well for, you know, um, being that, uh, just giving us the opportunity and everything. And like I said, you know, with the outreaches that you guys provide, I've been able to be more involved and, and have that opportunity to help and give back. So thank you, Pastor Andrew. Uh, one thing you don't know about me is I struggle receiving compliments. Uh, I saw the last episode with Christian, I saw, uh, the I other saw. one, you know, I'm just like, bro, I'm turning red. So, uh, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. And that's the mission, man. It's, it's about us and not, it's not about me. So a question, this is a Q and a, right? I've, I've questioned you, but, uh, I sent you a question to kind of ponder and maybe we can discuss. And again, um, for those of you listening, this isn't like, rooted in biblical scripture. This is more personal application and experience. And so we're going to answer just truthfully and honestly, uh, in the best manner that we can. But the question is, Hey, I have, uh, lost a friend back in September last year. And since I have been feeling broken and empty, how do you go about dealing with grief? And so my question for you and whether or not you've experienced grief or the death of, or loss of a loved one, uh, maybe you could speak to how you personally would or how you personally have. I'm not sure your your experience. Yeah. So um, personally, you know, thank thank the Lord, I haven't um, really experienced the death of someone close. Um, as a child, I my younger older brother, um, he did pass away, but I was a little young mm -hmm. to really uh, remember that or deal with the grief. Um, however. If I did have to go through something like that, one thing I would say is, um, you know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And um, even, you know, in, in the small trials and tribulations that I face, you just have to remember to uh, to be in the word, talk to the father, um, pray and just rely on him and nothing else. Yeah. yeah. I think that's great advice and from your personal experience. And, and I, honestly, I haven't dealt with the the loss of somebody super close. And I think that we've all lost people, but the, the, what's the word that I'm looking for? Like the relational connection, it's been, you know, a couple of people removed. It's usually a friend of somebody or a family member of somebody. Um, but again, the same way that I deal with grief would be the same way that I deal with all of my issues in life. And that's just running to the word, running to the Lord, man. He's my comfort. He's my peace. All things make sense in him. 
Um, I could sit here and tell you to go get a counselor. I could tell you to go out and maybe write a journal. Uh, there's different stages to grief, but I'm not a professional when it comes to that. I don't know or have the personal experience where I can encourage somebody uh, in a manner that, oh, it's like an aha moment. But I think what you said uh, lines up with what I think as well is like, we got to run to Jesus for that. Yeah, well, when when you asked me the question, um, really all I could think about was, you know, how how would I deal with any other problem, right? And it's like, just rely on the Lord. Yeah. Um, that's the only thing that could come to mind. That's a bar right there. That's a mic drop. That's good. <laughs> yeah, like rely on the Lord. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, for the one who asked that question, just know that we love you and we're praying for you and we're sending out encouragement. And, uh, you know, for me, actually, Christian, what it does is when there's somebody close who is lost, it reminds me of the sense of urgency in which we must operate when it comes to spreading the gospel, right? Because is your friend saved? Did they know the Lord? Did they have faith? And knowing that life is not promised, uh, everybody dies, like nobody get not to be dark, but like everybody dies, nobody gets yeah. out of here alive. It is of the utmost importance that we preach the gospel and tell our loved ones and close ones about Jesus so that we have the hope to hold on to that we'll see them again. Of course. Yeah. So I asked you to have a question for me. Uh, what is that question? So my question for you, um, it is it is uh, something that you know I kind of struggle with, which is why I wanted to ask you it, being that you are uh, you know our leader um, and our shepherd. Um, and it would be, how do you deal with um, you know we all sin, we all fall short, we all have mistakes, and how do you deal with um, like the guilt or like feeling like maybe you did wrong to the Lord? How do you deal with having that guilt inside of you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say I stand on the truth that there is no guilt or condemnation or shame in Christ. That's the truth of the word. And so if I'm dealing with guilt or shame or, or regret, I understand that that is a lie from the enemy. Now, oh. That grace isn't a license for me to live in sin by any means. It's not one of those things where like, oh, well, God's going to forgive me. There's no guilt. There's no condemnation uh, or shame. So I'm just going to do what I want. Uh, but it empowers me that if I make a mistake, if I fall short, uh, I am loved just as much as I was beforehand, that I'm forgiven and that uh, any kind of shame associated with that is from the enemy. Uh, in, in Romans eight twenty eight, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Uh, there's this idea that if I'm faced with a difficulty or a fork in the road, I've got to go left, I've got to go right. Nobody here wants to make a bad decision or walk through a door that God didn't open, right? Because we love him and we want to serve him well. That verse reminds me that whether I go left or right, or I pick door A or B, if I do so in faith and with a pure heart, even if it's not what God wanted me to do, there's still love, mercy, and grace associated with it. And it will work out for my good and for his glory. So my intention is like, yo, let me have a pure heart. Let me operate in faith. And, and God sees my heart. So even if I'm like, man, I've got this job opportunity, should I take it or should I not? What a lot of people do is they freeze. They're like, oh, I'm not going to take any job. And then they're unemployed sitting on the couch. Well, I didn't know whether to go right or left or to take it or not. No, I have the boldness and confidence that if, you know, if, if I make that decision, that if I do so with a pure heart and in faith, it's going to work out regardless. And if it wasn't the right one, you know what God will do? He'll close that door and I'll go up. Well, that wasn't the right choice. If it was, boom, he's going to bless it and it's going to prosper and it's going to grow or a new door is going to open. So I have this confidence in the Lord that uh, regardless of what I do or the choices I make, if I do so with a pure heart and out of faith, that it's all going to work out of that. So the last question for you, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Uh, you're 99 years old. You've lived a whole healthy life. You and Lisbeth have 12 kids. Sorry, Lisbeth. That's just the way you're, you're, you're with a man in ministry, you know, and, and he's young, you know, they, we love big families, right? So you got 12 kids, you got 36 grandkids, you, you, you're finishing well and you're lying on your deathbed and you've got one minute, maybe 30 seconds to tell the world a message. You got one message to give the world. I want you to look in that camera and tell the world, what would your message to the world be? Wow, yeah, putting me on the spot for sure, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, man, the message to the world. Um, I would just say, you know, love love people the way you would want to be uh, loved yourself. Treat them the way you would want to be treated. You know, the ultimate message of Jesus Christ. And um, really just uh, understand that, you know, everything everything outside of, of, 
of Christ is just a lie from the devil. You know, nothing nothing can uh, penetrate your relationship with God if you're truly walking in that um, in that light. And so, um, just love people, um, do your best to treat others the way you would want to be treated, and uh, things will work out in the end. That's amazing. How old are you, by the way? 23 years old. This is wisdom from a 23 year old young man. I believe that God is going is going to continue to do amazing things in you and through you. When I was 23 years old, I did not have a fraction of the wisdom that you have right now. I am proud of you and I am honored to do ministry with you. And uh, I foresee you being a large part of what we're doing, but also on your own. And if God calls you in a different direction, man, I honor that. And I'm just excited for the impact that you're making on this world. So I love you. I love you too, Pastor Andrew. Thank you. You're welcome. So. Hey, thank you for watching another episode of Q&A with Pastor Andrew F. Carter. Uh, you guys, an amazing episode. Let my boy Christian know how well he did in the comment section. And listen, for the next time we do this, leave your questions down low. Like, you guys want us to talk about these things? Let us know and we will do our best to answer them. But before you go, make sure that you like this video click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications. You don't want to miss our next episode. And last thing, last request, okay? Share this with at least one friend. You never know who is going to be inspired by what we just talked about and sharing is caring. So until next time, you guys have an amazing day and we will see you later.